Welcome to Two Crazy Scoops Podcast with your hosts Ayo and Antino. This week we're going to be talking about computers again, movies, uh, Ray-Bans for some reason, video games, kind of, um, just, you know, music stuff and, and Superman. And somehow Aaron's going to learn to play guitar within five seconds. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. I think it's going to take a little bit longer than that. Stay tuned to find out. Yeah. I apologize in advance for anyone who makes it to the end of this episode. (laughs) (laughs) My guitar skills are terrible, so well, we'll see what happens. Hey, man, you got to start somewhere. I guess. Um... So this week, I don't know. I'm going to start off with this. I didn't want to start off with this. I'm going to start off with this. Sure. So someone um, responded to the episode last week. And their advice, well, first off, they were very kind to you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. They said that it was the lady that you were dancing with's fault. Oh, good. Okay. Good. And they told me to dance with my wife. (laughs) <laughs> Which if they didn't listen to the episode That's the whole thing I was upset about <laughs> No, I appreciate the responses The only thing that I can say is I want to dance as much as the general public Wants to make a podcast Ooh What? <laughs> I don't know how to take that I just don't want to dance Why is that a bad thing? But the way you said it what? You, so what you should have said is, I just don't like to dance. Oh, I don't like to dance. But when you say, I don't like to dance. But I already dance. said I don't like to dance before, <clears throat> so it didn't make the point, so I had to say that. No, they no, they did make it, but what they're saying is you should still dance regardless of whether you like it or not. That's what they're saying. <sighs> well, I just feel like it's podcasting. Like, if I was up to someone and I was like, hey, do you, would you like, a general person in the public, would you like to start a podcast? A lot of people would say, I don't have anything to talk about. I don't want to do it. And if I insisted on them doing it, and I was like, no, no, it's so much fun. And then they go and try it, and they're like, this this is terrible. We didn't do anything. Maybe the analogy is wrong. I don't know. Maybe. It just sounded a little harsh. (laughs) At least to me it did. (laughs) Uh. Uh. But funny enough, though, your wife, I mean, that's part of... Like, it's in her blood. Dancing is in her blood. Well, apparently it's in my blood, too. Oh, that's true. That's right, because you were just saying. Exactly! <laughs> I, forgot. <laughs> I forgot. That is the stereotype, <laughs> and I am tired of it. Just let me live my life, please. <laughs> and they, uh, th- th- Okay, another thing they said is. Oh, no, but you did dance for the mariachi, right? No, I didn't. You kind of did, no, though. No, I didn't. With your instrument, right? You're swaying. That's not dancing. I mean, that's still... And that's for a purpose, okay? No, but that's still that's still part of the whole... The culture and everything. I mean, if you just stand there stiff as a board, it's not entertaining. So just the movements of everybody, the dancers, the band, everybody, and you were part of the band. So, I mean, technically, yes, you were still dancing. Well, she said that no... Or they said that nobody's looking at you when you dance. They said no one's looking at me when I dance. I'd like to let you know, I just feel like the dynamic here, since it's such a small area, it's just a little different. Like, you know everyone that's there, and it's just such a small area. We're not, like, dancing in big dance halls or at weddings. Well, I don't know. I think when you're dancing with somebody else versus just by yourself, I think that makes a huge difference. I think, okay, let me rephrase this. If it was at a wedding at a big venue, I would dance. But the majority of times that I was going places, it was like someone's garage. Yeah, and understandably, you wouldn't want to. People would like send me videos of me dancing. So you should start a TikTok and use those videos in there. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to start a TikTok. A no, crazy I, that, is, I, that is no. <laughs> I stop at Instagram. <laughs> My gosh. Do you still Where, have those videos though? What, I have one of them. I think someone only sent me one, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, we got you." And I was like, "Yeah." Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have, yeah, I have some videos like but, that. But I mean, I if it does cruise. sound harsh, what I said, all I'll say is I have issues. 
that's at the root of why I don't like dancing. Yeah. And it like puts those issues at the forefront of my face when I start, you know, going out there. I used to just even try to do the uh, Cupid shuffle, mm -hmm. but uh, now I don't even try. On the bright side, um, if anyone has been listening to this podcast for more than one episode, they already know you have issues. <laughs> I know, but I just think it needed so. to be said. It's a nice little barrier that I can say whatever I want because I just end it with, I have issues. <laughs> yeah, well, admitting it is the first step, right? So. <laughs> but I'm fix trying to fix my issues. <laughs> but no, yeah, it was good. Thank you for the feedback. Pain and confusion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that clip. What does some people think PC stands for pain <laughs> and confusion? <laughs> and it still does for some people. Anyway. Um, all right. But I do appreciate the um, responses, though. Yes. It creates dialogue <clears throat> and it gives us something to scream about. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I will just say that on Spotify, you can now put uh, questions as well. And so I put a question on last episode. And I asked people, it's a Q&A, and it shows up, if you click on the episode at the bottom, it says, do you dance, and why don't you dance? So we got two replies from that. And I didn't even tell people, they just found it, so that was pretty, well, actually, I told, did tell one person. So someone put, I don't like hearing my thigh fat slap together. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I'm not the only one that doesn't like to dance. Uh, yeah. we, uh, you know what? People who don't like to dance, we need to unite and protest these dancing parties. Wait a minute. Okay, so cut they, off the wait, electricity. So what was the question again? Do you dance? Do you okay? And then why don't you dance? Okay, and they said they don't like their thigh fat slapping together. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But you know what's funny? I don't know, because I kind of feel like there's a lot of dancers. And, and I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to be rude when that I say this. That are on the this, heavy side. But yeah, there's yeah. a lot of dancers who are on the heavy side. And they are some of the best dancers. Yeah. So I just think that's kind of funny that they said that. Well, you know, it's all about, <clears throat> like, moving. I don't know. I guess, I, I guess it's atti attitude is a big thing. Attitude. But, but I know some people who are, you know. Oh, no. Is this going to be like a intervention where Antonio needs to start dancing now? Yes, yes. I'm going to start a petition. <laughs> Um, a GoFundMe for for dance lessons. For <laughs> it, <you know? laughs> oh, please, just give me the money. I don't need dance lessons. <laughs> okay, the other person put, "We can dance if we want to. We can leave your friends behind because your friends don't dance, and if they don't dance, well, they're no friends of mine." Oh yeah, okay. So I mean, you know, not a serious response, but hey. Thank you for responding. Oh, you should have put that on Instagram as well, though. I know, but I was lazy. Because Spotify, um, everyone doesn't listen on Spotify. Some people yeah. listen to... Well, it was an experimental thing that I tried, and then... I no, I think like, we should do it. I just think it should be done in both places, that's all. Should I just put it up here and see if anybody responds within the amount of time before we finish the episode? Sure, you can. Okay. Well, this is how the... Uh, this is how we do what we do. So, basically, I just go on the picture, I click on story, I take, no, I'm not going to take a picture of Aaron's face, but that would be <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> do you, uh, so, no, no. Do you dance? Why don't you dance? And we'll see what happens. And that's on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. And then by the end of the episode, if they will kind of see what. I'll, I'll monitor it. Okay. See if anybody flips out. And talking about dancing um, or music, maybe. Um, a good question that you asked for this episode is, are CDs dead? Yeah, I had that realization. I've been trying to learn about uh, Mac computers lately. And one of the books that I was reading, which was for uh, the OS system, Sierra, uh, it was talking about loading discs and stuff like that. And I realized that discs are like kind of dead these days. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, you think they're going to have a comeback like records do? Okay, so are you talking about CDs for music or CDs for software and things like that? For software, I think that's already dead. And they're even moving from video games to like digital. Like, can't, isn't there a PS5 that you can only, it only takes digital uh, mm -hmm. games? Mm -hmm. And the Xbox too. Oh, really? The Xbox. Well, then Nintendo's kind of like leaning towards that because if you buy the games, it'll back it up to the cloud. So even if your system gets destroyed, you at least have 
yeah. backups to it, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just wondering if like the, the CDs, like music CDs are dead. Well, you know, funny enough, um, what I found out is that, so for the most part, yes, <laughs> there's very few CD sales anymore. But what I found out is that vinyl actually outsold CDs in 2020. Really? And it's on its way to outselling it again in 2021. And that's the first time that's happened in the last 30 years that vinyl has actually sold CDs. But vinyl has made a comeback. I think the pandemic actually may have contributed to that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because, but yeah, something about vinyl is just making a resurgence. Well, I think it's kind of uh, the physical aspect of watching it turn and setting it up. It's a lot more fun than just plopping in a CD. It absolutely is. And in fact, it's funny because I remember years ago, I used to hang out with my cousin and he had crates and crates and crates of collections because his father was a, or I'm sorry, his uncle was a DJ. Um, And so he had all these records and all these vinyls. Most of them are much older, of course, but I would go over there like on a Saturday and we would just spend like the whole evening just spinning records on a record player. And there's something about like having to position the actual record, uh, you know, the needle in the right spot. There's something about the pop and the crackle of the actual record that just you can't get that. Wait, wait. You, what you're saying then is if I eat Rice Krispies while I'm listening to a CD, it's the same effect? It's pretty much, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then it's funny because if there was a record that got scratched, he, and I don't know if you're not supposed to technically do this, but what he would do is take some alcohol and drop a few alcohol drops on the record while it's spinning, uh-huh. and it was actually clear up the sound. Huh. I'm sure... Water may have done the same thing. I don't no, know. No, I think alcohol but is because that's what I use to clean my records. Really? Okay. So yeah, he put a few drops on there, and it would it would smooth over the sound a little bit. Oh no, he wasn't drinking it. He was using it. To clean it. <laughs> no, I know. Oh man. Well, yeah. It'll if you drink the alcohol, that will also <laughs> smooth out the sound. So you take your pick. <laughs> no, I use uh, like a, uh, and I mean I may be wrong here. I'm sure there's people who are experts in this, but I just use cotton swabs and alcohol and and that's what we did too yeah yeah I, again i don't know officially if that's what you and you, there's a little like a rectangular it's like a velvet and you can wa- rub it on this uh like on a record yeah on the record mm-hmm. and that'll get the little bits of cotton off of it too okay See, that's all new to me i i didn't know um but yeah i don't know and it's funny because I've been on this uh, rampage of trying to just get rid of too much clutter because I have a tendency to collect a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, I have an apartment, so it's only so much junk I can fit in here. But I started to get a record player, but then I just say, well, let me just hold off. Yeah. So, um, but I do want another one. And if I did get one, I would definitely buy a couple of vinyls again. So anyway, so our CDs there, to answer your question, I would say just about. <laughs> Just about. Um, Except for those like ones they sell on PBS that old people buy. Yeah, exactly. There's a, there's always going to be a group of people who are still going to support the technology. But, um, I mean, even vinyl is, an, is a testament to that. But I, th- um, I think three years ago, I just got rid of all my CDs. And I had a ton of CDs. I had... You know, it's funny. I had a CD player in my other car. and so I, I But I only had like two or three CDs. Uh, One of them was one of the CDs I actually bought off Amazon and I had to buy it off Amazon because they took the song that I wanted off of all the streaming platforms due to some licensing, whatever, I guess. I don't know. So it wasn't available to stream no more. So I found the CD on Amazon. So I bought it just for that song. Yeah. I couldn't find it anywhere else. And then I burned it and now I have it. Uh, I'm not telling anybody. What? You uh, You can listen to those songs on YouTube. Oh, you can, yeah. No, you absolutely can. I mean, I wouldn't tell anybody to to record them and save it on their phone as an MP3 file. That would not be good. So, But there's apps for that, just in case you (laughs) choose to do it. But we're not telling you to do that. We're just saying it's possible. (laughs) I don't know why it's possible. Maybe it shouldn't be, but YouTube lets it happen. That's kind of funny. This this is kind of a side point, but this magazine, it was some controversy earlier this week about a magazine it was a video game that came out, and the magazine was like, oh, this video game can be pirated, and you can find it online already. Oh, no. Yeah, and the company who made the game went after them, and they kind of deleted some of their videos that were talking about it. But anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. 
because the but the magazine was saying we weren't telling people to pirate, but it, but they were <laughs> saying like, hey, this is, is available online. You can just go download it, and, you know. But they tried to cover it. They tried to say it was just a news story, but the way they worded it, it was just <laughs> they were like, yeah. Anyway, this is a parody of life. This whole podcast. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. But anyway, um, take it with a bag of salt. Oh, but sometimes they'll pull stuff off of YouTube as well too. Who? Music. Sometimes they'll pull music off off of YouTube as well. So yeah. You just gotta find it while it's on there, I guess. Someone eventually will up, re-upload it, but yeah, there's this song that I really, really liked. But the guy who is an obscure artist, because you know, mm-hmm. that's what I listen to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he collaborated with another obscure artist, and I don't know if they like disagreed on something, but you can't find that one song under his albums anymore. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. That's what. That's the only thing with Spotify. It's a little difficult. Is sometimes even with Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, they'll come out with like live versions of this. <clears throat> You save it to a playlist, the next thing you know, it's, like, blank. Right, yeah. And that's a lot of that has to do with the streaming rights. So that's the one advantage of physical media, like DVDs, Blu-rays, CDs. Once you buy it, it's yours. But with streaming, stuff can come and go at any time. You just never know. So, And even, like I said, YouTube is is uh, is up in the air. You might be able to find the song, but even then, there's no guarantee it'll stay up there. Because I know they, uh, just, uh, just as an example, I know what, uh, when Aaliyah's music was just recently released on all the streaming platforms, they took it off of YouTube. Because that's how I used to listen to all her music oh. on YouTube. But when they got ready to release it, they went and scrubbed all her stuff off of YouTube. I think, I'm sure people still up, re-uploaded it, but I'm just saying that's how I used to listen to her stuff. I think that's what they did with the Beatles, because you could watch their rooftop uh, concert. Yeah. And because that new film's coming out with Disney Plus or whatever. They think they got they rid of it. They pulled the video The down. video off from it. Okay, I didn't know about that. I do know. It wasn't an official video. It was just I, someone, I, someone had recorded it? Yeah, and I think they just scrubbed it of, like, everybody. Because you can only find, like, clips of it. Got you. Yeah. Um, so when is that coming out? I don't know, but it's pretty soon. Huh. And instead of listening to that, I was, like, listening to the audio of, I guess, a newscaster going around asking people, like, what they thought about it. He's like, hello, how you doing today? And they're like, I'm doing great. Do you know who's playing up there? No? Like, it's the Beatles. <laughs> Do you like the Beatles? Yeah, I love the Beatles, but, you know, this is some kind of sound pollution. You can't be having people doing this during working hours. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that is funny. So this was their, that, that was their last concert, I think, right? Uh, Yeah, I it? guess. That was their was first concert in three years, and then it was their last concert, because after that... They broke up. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, a little music history for you. <laughs> well, I guess. For some of our younger listeners who know nothing about the Beatles. I'm telling you, man, I remember when I didn't know what about the Beatles, and people were like, you don't know who the Beatles are? Mm-hmm. Like, no, actually, I don't even know what any of these artists are, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that was me, too. Yeah, that was me too. I didn't really grow up listening to them. My, now, my parents knew all their music, and I didn't know that. You know how I found out about, you know how I really got to know their music was the number one album. Do you remember that album? Uh-huh. The number one. It was big. It blew. And so when after I got that, eventually, then I started realizing, like, oh, the, and some of the songs I had heard before, I just didn't know they were Beatles songs. I heard covers. You know, like, for example, if you grew up in the 90s and you ever watched The Wonder Years, you know, the intro to that is... Uh, it, well, technically, it's a singer named Joe Cocker, but he sings a Beatles song. I've never watched The Wonder Years. Okay, so, yeah. That, like I said, if you grew up in the 90s, you're not born in the 90s. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, he sings a cover of uh, A Little Help With Your Friends. Oh, does he say he gets high with A Little Help With His see, Friends? I wasn't, that? Yeah, I wasn't about to go into the lyrics. I was wow. just letting you know what song it was. But that was a what Beatles. What kind of shows were you watching this, in the 90s? That, no, well, I didn't even pay attention to the words to that song. I just knew when I heard it, The Wonder Years was coming on. Anyone who listened, anyone from the 90s would remember that. If yeah. you were too young, then I'm talking over your head. Anyway, <clears throat> what's next on our list? Oh, um... Well, I wanted to get some tech advice, Aaron. Oh, okay. Uh, we have thousand dollar phones, thousand dollar tablets. But sometimes we don't get the most out of these devices as we could. Not everybody's phone's a thousand dollars. I'm just kind of exaggerating for effect. But mm-hmm. what are some things that, um, 
what are five things, and I think I'm screwing these things in order, but what are five things that tablets, computers, and iPhones do that people don't know that's there or they don't properly use it on a regular basis that could really help them in their general life? Well, I do. I did make a list of five things, but I don't know how serious you were <laughs> about getting this information or if this was kind of a joke as well. It's both. Okay. Good. Like I said. Okay. So these are some interesting things that your phone can do. Oh, no. What? No, it's, it's good. I kept it. I kept this good. So like, these, blackmail. You can right. do it your friends. <laughs> Without them even knowing it. <laughs> See, I was. Okay. So, no, I, I, I thought of uh, five wholesome things <laughs> that you can do <laughs> with your phone or tablet. Um, so, believe it or not, there's actually an app called Be Safe. And... It is an app for when you are walking home. This is just an example. Most people probably don't really do this. But if you're ever walking home by yourself, this is a phone. This is an app. And what it does is it tracks your location. It sets a timer because you should be moving from point A to point B by a certain period of time. And if it doesn't, it'll automatically like text all your contacts, whoever you set up um, to receive your distress calls. Um, and it will even call schedule fake calls so it'll call your phone just as a way to keep you occupied while you on your walk home or something like that so if you're huh. you know so i thought that was kind of interesting so it keeps you safe while you're walking um another feature and these are all based on apps by the way because i figured you you, you wanted things that your phone could do that because phones can do pretty much anything when you think about it if you buy if you get the correct app so there's a million things your phone can do well i mean just stuff that's already pre-installed on the uh, systems no, I I didn't. I every or everything I came up with revolves around an app. But okay, let's helpful. rephrase. What are five apps that people can get on their iPhones? Well, that no, can help we, well them? we can do the ne that question next week. Oh, okay, but with stuff that's already on your phone. But I'm talking about like what can your phone do? So I'm like, yeah, these are things your phone can do. Okay, uh, another thing your phone can do. So number two is it can help you hang a picture straight. So all you have to do is download an app called Bubble Level or any leveling app. Because all phones have, all modern smartphones have accelerometers inside, which basically that tells you the phone which way you're holding the, the, the device. Isn't there already an app on? It might be on iPhone. iPhone. Yeah, but I don't know if that comes on all Android phones. There is a there is oh, an app on Oh, we're the, talking about Apple's and... Well, I was talking, yeah, because everyone has... Okay, a, your iPhone has a yeah, level on it. Yep, yeah, it does, yeah. So you can use that that app. So if you have an iPhone, you already have a level, but... You oh, can, man, your pictures are not level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You can use the phone as an actual level. So if you have an iPhone, it is built in Android. I don't know, but if not, you can always download an app and use that. So you don't have to go buy a level. You can just use your phone. That's helpful. <clears throat> That's very helpful. Until it falls off and breaks. <laughs> hey, this We're talking about keeping it level, not <laughs> keeping it on the wall. Um, Too crazy, school. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Curse them! <laughs> I uh, vow from this day <laughs> forward to make their lives miserable. Right. Um, okay, uh, number three, you can actually buy a tiny device that can track that can measure your blood alcohol level. Um, yeah, it's called Backtrack. <laughs> it's a smartphone <laughs> breathalyzer. So basically, if you're trying to decide on whether you oh need to take Oh my goodness, a <laughs> that don't. You should all, just don't. Just don't. If you're trying to decide if you need to take oh your tab on you just pull this the out. officer, I have this app that two crazy scoop. The two what? Right. Oh, it's just, you know, podcast. Yeah. What's a podcast? Right, exactly. Sir, you're definitely, <laughs> definitely not in a place to drive right now. Look, I'm just letting you know this is possible. That's that was the po point of this discussion. So there you go. If you need to know your blood alcohol level, <laughs> do it with your phone. No, don't. <laughs> um, there is another app called Viper Smart Start, which is an app that will allow you to unlock, lock, and remotely start your car. Um, this particular. Um, I guess device can be installed on any car. So if you have an older car or something like that, that doesn't, you know, you can always get it installed after. I guess you could do it with a newer car, but why would you want to? Most newer cars have that feature built in, right? Yeah, my car does. It's a 2018 and I never use it because <clears throat> I don't live when it's where it's cold. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no, but you can remote start it to turn on the AC, right? 
Yeah, I just, um, they told me how to do it, and I could never figure it out, and then I just never looked online how to do it. Got you. So, yeah, so in your case, you probably, this is probably not interesting to you, but most modern cars, a lot of them have the remote start features and all that stuff. But if it don't, you have an option to get it installed. So there's another thing your phone can do. And last but not least, this is a cool little device. So um, start your car, take a breathalyzer test. Right, exactly. You may have to do both. Level yourself <laughs> so you can sit up straight. <laughs> and then call your family and friends and say, if I don't make it home within 20 minutes, right. alert the police. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, see that's see that's great. I uh, you put together a whole story based on these <laughs> features. Well, there was one more, but now I don't know if it, it would fit. But there's this cool little device called a Hudway, and basically it's like a little, it's almost like a little screen, but it's see through. You put it on your dashboard, and you know how when you have maps or Google Maps on your phone, yeah, and you're trying to navigate. Well, this is a way to put the information from the map onto this little screen. Don't look at the street. Just look at the and map. And it looks at, no, yeah, but it looks, it's like a little clear screen that you put on your, near your windshield. So you can actually see the map. So you don't have to look down or look away from the road to look at your phone. You just look straight ahead. And so that's a cool little device that you can get. It's dash mounted. It's inexpensive and it looks pretty cool. <clears throat> So those are the five things oh my God. That, that your phone <laughs> can crazy do that a lot of people don't import, know. It does not. Uh, we don't get any money from any of these apps or anything. But, no, uh, we we, but if you do decide to use any of these features, let us know how it worked for you, especially if you use the breath of my Or if you want to give us money. <laughs> right, exactly. We'll test all these apps out. But yeah. So those are the five things. If you want five, <laughs> if you want five more for next week, we can just make this a regular segment. <laughs> five things you didn't know your cell phone could do. There you go. All right, we'll be back next week with another. Like seven apps that can train you while you're drinking to pass the police officer's <laughs> drinking test. Oh, man. Oh, There's man. an app for everything, so yeah, that could be a regular. Isn't it like the whole thing with poppy seed bagels? If you eat them, you're like you'll test positive for heroin or something. I, I'm, that's a tricky one. That's I think a, Mythbusters did it, and they said that. Yeah, uh, I don't know. This has I nothing always, to do. I mean, I went straight to heroin, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> where are we going with this? Um, I put what? Or yeah, what happened with people being to act? People were able to access your iPhone without you doing anything, and that's why they had that update. Like it was. All over the news. Are you talking about just recently? Yeah. Yeah, so you still got to update. Oh, it, it was some type of glitch. And uh, I didn't, you know, honestly, I didn't, I did update my phone, but I didn't read the details about, like, what caused it. Um, so I have to apologize. I don't have all the info on that. But, um, yeah, it was just a glitch that they were able, it was a security bug that they were able to fix that. But, yeah. Everyone has your information. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, stuff leaks out all the time. If you don't pick a safe password, it, people can easily get into your stuff. But, yeah, for the iPhone security issue, I again, I apologize. I didn't – I do remember reading about it, and I said, okay, well, the update is out. Let me go ahead and update. So I updated my phone and my tablet. But I didn't read the details of as to what – I'm not even sure if they put them on there, to be honest. They're like, if you go to settings in general and then – Type in this VPN. No, but usually they'll give you a synopsis. They won't go into detail. Well, it depends, but because there was a, there was one bug where if you there was like this random string of text and letters and numbers that if you text it to yourself, it would lock. It would uh, break the Wi-Fi on your phone. Whoa! And they told you what the string was if you text it. But the, what are the odds of that? Wasn't there one where if you could if you called somebody, you could listen to their audio? It was like uh, through FaceTime. There was a glitch. Hmm, I haven't heard that one, oh. but not surprising, though. Yeah, that one was really, like, <clears throat> crazy. Yeah, that would be, uh, yeah, that is kind of messed up to be able to call somebody and then just listen in on where. I mean, that's the thing with software. It's, everything with these phones is so complicated. It's easy that a simple mistake can cause. Major iPhone FaceTime bug lets you hear the audio of the person you're calling before they pick up. Oh, wow. Yeah, that that's was crazy. 2019. Oh, okay. Oh, that's messed up. You calling somebody? And Here's you how hear... to do the iPhone FaceTime bug. 
Start a FaceTime video call with an <laughs> iPhone contact. Whilst the call is dialing, swipe up from the bottom of the screen and add tap add and tap add person. I don't know if I want to read the whole instructions on this, but yeah, that is funny because especially if you can hear the person saying, "Oh, is this jerk oh, Tino calling?" Idiot. Yeah, he calls me every <laughs> single day. I'm just gonna ignore this. What's going <laughs> wrong in this dumb person's life? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's... Uh, I yeah. bet he still won't dance with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. Oh, man. I have issues. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. So when I'm working with computers, there's certain programs that I'm intimidated by, and it's hard to get right into it. What process do you use in order to take a step-by-step uh, approach to a uh, subject that maybe... You're unfamiliar with, but you have the potential to learn. Yeah, for me, nowadays, I'm all about YouTube. I YouTube everything, Um, even when it comes to software and stuff like that as well, because there's a lot of programs that I'm not familiar with either, and I need to figure them out quickly. I just look at a quick video. I will read. Sometimes I'll read articles on it, too, depending on how much time I have. If I have a little bit more time, I might read something about it, too. And then watch a video. But a lot of times when you Google how to do something or how to use a program, even if it does take you to an article, usually there's like a YouTube link embedded in the article. You can just you know look at it. And so I think that's probably the quickest way to do it. Um, if you're trying to get into deep detail, you might even be able to find. I'm also a huge fan of Udemy, which if you don't know what that is, that's basically an online training platform. Where how do you, you can spell learn. It? So U D E M Y. And so you can go in there and learn anything. And you have to pay for the courses, but they're generally inexpensive. They're like 10 bucks. Hmm. So, for example, if you want to learn how to edit videos, well, there's video editing courses up there. If you want to learn photography, if you want to learn an instrument, you want to learn a language, pretty much anything you can think of is on there. I'm not advertising for them. I'm just saying that. And we're really like I giving know, a bunch we, of people. We really do need to get sponsored by some of these companies. But no. Um, Doritos. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I don't eat Doritos. You don't have to. You do. And you eat Taco Bell. You could. You should see if you can get us a sponsorship deal with Taco Think Bell. Think outside the podcast. <laughs> right. I would probably, yeah, but then I would be forced to eat them, right? Um, You know, we you could crunch it with your hands and say, wow, True. this is so great. Right. I always eat Taco Bell, and I always have enjoyed Taco Bell. <laughs> what do you think, Antino? And I'm like, oh, oh, oh my God, I love it. Oh, what are we talking about again? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no. Well, for me, it would be <laughs> pretending. For you, it would be serious. <laughs> but you could just crunch it. <laughs> yeah. I love Doritos tacos. I from just Taco ate a Bell. whole burrito in <laughs> one bite. <laughs> <laughs> now, time for a restroom break. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, um, so, yeah, well, that's just what I do. It's interesting yeah. as time goes on. Do you feel like computer literacy is becoming... Uh, is that something in the public knowledge, or do you feel like computer literacy is losing its way as people, as generations go on? No, no, no. It's getting, I mean, people are much more aware of how to use computers, basic computers and stuff, you know, basic features now. But when it comes to actual, um, like, troubleshooting issues or uh, figuring out what's going wrong with their own machines, do you feel like that's something that's going to... It's definitely better now than it was back in the day. You remember that video from last yeah. last week? It's way better today. And you got to remember, it's a whole new generation, too, because you have a generation who came up with computers, who mm-hmm. went to the workforce. You know, when my mom first started in the workforce, she didn't. there were no computers where she was at. Everything was typewriters and files and everything. And then slowly over time, as they got integrated, she, she kind of picked up on it. But her parents knew nothing, <laughs> you know. So I think with the... Everyone knows how to use a PC now, the mm-hmm. basics at least. Troubleshooting might still be an issue um, because at my, at my old job, that's pretty much, even, though it, when it, even when it was no longer my job, people still called on me to fix basic uh, you know, computer issues. But they did know how to at least use the computer. Well, I mean, working on your own computer may be intimidating, but having a business and working on your whole team's computers is intimidating. But then as you continue to go up the chain of like, bigger companies, airports, hospitals, things like that. Mm -hmm. It just gets even crazier. Yeah, 
Yeah, people can are easily trained to use the programs that they need, and that's not an issue. But when it comes to troubleshooting, that still is a, a sore point. If you're not a comp- if you're not a nerd, basically, then you a lot of a lot of people get frustrated with it and have a hard time troubleshooting. So for f- someone who's not quote unquote a nerd, what's a practical way to look at these issues so that it becomes interesting to you? Would you say a practical way to look at the issues as far as what? Like, you're actually interested in this stuff. Yeah. You want to know. Mm-hmm. But for someone who doesn't really care, but they kind of need to figure it out. Oh, well, the I mean, the newer operating systems, they have a troubleshooter that you can go follow through built in. Where? Um, Like the help. Oh, help. Notes help. Notes user guide for Mac OS Big Sur. And Windows does too. Like if you have an issue, you a lot of times if you have an issue, you can there an option will pop up that'll say, "Hey, would you like Windows to troubleshoot this issue?" And so yeah. it'll bring up a box and it'll give you some tips. Now people find that frustrating, yes, but I mean, hey, it does. It will help the person solve the basics. The solution, the first thing you always do whenever you have a computer issue is restart it. <laughs> did you turn? Did you try turning it off and turning it back on? <laughs> Did you try turning it off and turning it on again? <laughs> so what you just told me actually answers my question. Mm-hmm. I don't think I need five reasons. I just didn't really know there was a help tab here. And it tells you basically how to use the notes program. Yeah, so each program is going to have that feature as well. Wow. But, you know, again, everyone doesn't read, so, I, you know. Well, no, I'm not, no, I'm not saying that about you. I'm just saying in general. I am literate, Aaron. I, we've been through this. I don't just memorize the books <laughs> that I'm reading before I read them. I used to do that as a kid. When they were te- teaching me how to read, mm-hmm. I just memorized the book so I didn't have to so read it. You didn't have to read it. I was nice. holding it upside down one time, and they were like, are you kidding? I was like, <laughs> no, why? <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. I have issues. Anyways, let me open the notes app again. I closed it. <laughs> Notes. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that was very interesting. Uh, computers hurt my brain, and they make me want to throw them at a wall, um, which is funny because... You're not alone. Computer data is in the weird limbo of existing and yet not existing. That's a very strange place. A whole company can lose all of their data and just one fell swoop so it's all about protecting that data which is kind of funny Mm -hmm. it's like let's protect these imaginary things that have real world life consequences yeah no exactly speaking of real life consequences um what are your top five movies (laughs) (laughs) that was quite the segue into that (laughs) okay so let's go from computers to movie um well i mean it's kind of you know all, uh, hey, hey, computers are used. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, computers are used to create movies nowadays. They're, they're, how's that for a segue? No, um, actually, yeah. I didn't know that uh, Mac had a very big uh, effect on the creation of Pixar films. Mm-hmm. Well, Apple owns Pixar. But at a certain time, they didn't, correct? Correct. And so I didn't know that they had such an impact on that, mm-hmm. the creation of those films. Yeah, a lot of, a, not all movies, but a lot of the big studios and not just with movies, but music, with music as well, with anything that's considered art, you know, with artistic photography, things like that. A lot of the, in the business world, a lot of them use Macs for all, a lot of that work. Obviously, there's exceptions. You can do a lot of that stuff on Windows, but Macs, are, those are generally like the go-to for Hollywood, a lot of the editing and stuff that's done behind the scenes. Well, but Toy Story is created with Max. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, so going into movies, I figured we've done some top five lists before, <clears throat> and it went pretty interesting. Last top five we did was about music, top five songs. We got a little bit of feedback from that, so I figured we would do a top five movies this week as... Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly and so um and so i put together a top five and a few honorable mentions um I, are you still you i'm assuming you're still working on yours yeah okay so i'll just go through my top five real quickly 
Um, and this is as of today. Who knows? It might change. But um, right now, my top five favorite movies are starting with number five, Emperor's New Groove. If you've never seen it, it's a cartoon movie, but it's hilarious. It's a Disney. It's on Disney. If you have Disney Plus, great movie. Um, number four is A Beautiful Mind with Russell Crowe. It's a little sad, but very good. Uh, number three is The Prestige, which I think, if I remember right, I think that's Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman. And Hugh Jackman, yeah, um, really good movie. Um, Number two is Man in the Iron Mask. That was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, really good, really good movie. And my number one is Jurassic Park, the original Jurassic really? Park. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, when that movie came out, it was in the theaters for forever before it came on, on video. Uh, actually, it came out the year you were born, I think. Did it? <laughs> I think so. You were, are you 92? No, I'm 93. Okay, so it came out before you were born. <laughs> and I remember. <laughs> and uh, I, think, I think Jurassic Park was 92. I could be wrong. Let's look it up. Double check for me. I could be wrong. Do, 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 do. But when that 93. Movie, oh, it was 93. Uh, I, got, I, I, yeah. I, I was off by a little bit. Da, 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 wait, da, da, wait, da, da, wait, hold da, up. Wait, but what month were you born in? Uh, well, I don't want to give all the personal. Yeah, let me give my social security number while we're out here too. Yes, please do. Let me let me see when this when this film came out. It had to be the summer, or like it had to be like May or June. Then no, I was born before Jurassic Park came out. <clears throat> wow, that's crazy. So I'm sitting here in the theater, eight years old, watching Jurassic Park, and Antino is just a little infant. Like, why am I here? <laughs> What's happening to me? Man, that's crazy. Well, anyway, that's my top five. Um, good movies, good stories. Um, and for its time, Jurassic Park was amazing when it came to special effects, just the whole, everything about it. So, And my honorable mentions, I have a couple, are, I'm just doing two, or I yeah, hey, I'm just going to do two today, which would be Remember the Titans, which I love that movie. I think I saw that. With, um, um, what you call it, Denzel Washington. It's about the, the, the Titans. It was a football team. Oh, it's not radio. No, not radio. That actually was pretty good, too, with Cuba Gooden Jr. Yeah, I liked that film. Radio. But it was, that film was sad, too. And that I was, saw that when I was a kid, and his mom dies, and I was like, oh, Yeah, Radio man. was also a sad movie. But, uh, yeah, it was good. It was a good movie. Good film. And then the other one I was going to say is, another honorable mention is Into the Spider-Verse. Very good movie, if you have not seen it. Um, oh, yeah, he's like a coach, and they throw, like, a brick through his window, right? yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of brick throwing going on yeah. back in the day. Yeah, that was yeah. It takes it takes place during a time where you know segregation. Was, it it was it was it was a little deep. They were trying to get the football players to kind of be more unified because you had you know your black players, the white players. They they weren't supporting each other. It was during that time period. But at the end, everyone gets really close to each other. It's a really good movie, just to kind of see the journey as how they start to really. Appreciate each other. So anyway, it's kind of serious, but it's funny too, and it's got its funny, you know, it's got its funny moments, it's got its serious moments. It's a good film. And then into the Spider Verse. I mean, it's Spider Man. How can you not like it? It was probably one of the. It was like the Rogue One of Spider Mans. You know, I, like they made a bunch of Star Wars movies, and then they came out with Rogue One, and you're like, I actually like this. Yeah, it was. Finally, you did something with like the actual right. input that you've been having comic books being made about for years. Yeah. It was very well done. I mean, I and, and I use a good meter of knowing if it's well done. Is like if my mom likes it, then it must be pretty good. <laughs> there you go. Because she's not even a huge, you know, fan of that stuff. But she loved that movie, so I'm like, all right, good. So anyway, those are my top five. <clears throat> yeah, Plus, I have I to admit, mentions. I haven't really watched too many movies lately. Like, I can't remember the last film I saw. Luca. <laughs> I have not watched that film, and I'm going to talk about my top five now. So my number one film is Interstellar, because I like Christopher Nolan films, and I also like uh, Hans Zimmer's 
mm-hmm. musical contribution to films. Okay. Um, I liked Eddie and the Cruisers, which I will give a shout out to one of my friends for introducing me to. It is a, like, what, a cult classic? Is that what those are called? Mm-hmm. Where they weren't good when they came out, but they somehow gained a following. Um, yeah, yeah, it, that, that is what a cult classic is. Although for me, some movies that are cult classics still are terrible. So this one is more like, I think sometimes when I watch films, I like to see like myself in it. Mm -hmm. Not that I want to be like a, you know, eighties rock and roll star, which I (laughs) never have aspired to be, but it's kind of like that. Like this guy, it's a mystery. They're trying to see like if this guy's dead or not. And then it's all about flashbacks and stuff. Hmm. Um, I remember the movie, but I don't think I ever actually saw it. But you, I know it's you wouldn't 80s. like it. Well, I know it's an 80s. It's very look. like, uh, I don't know. You kind of have to like music in order to watch it. Oh, and I don't like music? Yeah, well, I mean, you have to be a musician. But as I found out recently, apparently you are a musician. Uh, that's up for debate. Not, um, not really. I'm not. I liked the prestige as well, despite the fact that a lady hangs herself in the film. It was really <laughs> depressing. Wow. <laughs> okay. So I'm. this is just like, I have to mention it. And a, die, a guy dies from drug addiction in Eddie and the Cruisers too. So if that triggers you, don't watch the film. <laughs> well, Interstellar has the most ridiculous ending so you're going to be sitting through a movie. Hey, I'm that, talking right now. No, this is my no. top five. Well, I, mean, I didn't you're, interrupt you're you. Start trashing the movies now. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't yeah, want people to go into it being like, well, they, like some people I know who told me that a movie was a good movie and then I saw it and it wasn't. Did, did I do that? We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I recommend is anyways, great. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> um. I can't think of any other films that I really like that don't make me sound like a total idiot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a film I like called Shane. It's okay. Like a, it's a cowboy film. All right. But apparently among the cowboy film community, people don't like it because they portray the village, like not the village people. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, people who live in the town, they portray them as being weak farmers. When in reality, the people who lived on farms were tough individuals who'd shoot you in the face if you did anything wrong. Interesting. So the premise of the film is that a guy who's escaping his past comes into a town, meets a family. It's a wholesome situation. Mm -hmm. But then the bad guys come, and he's the only guy who can do something about it. Mm -hmm. So is he going to choose a path of peace, or is he going to fall back into his old ways and become the uh, person that he has always been? Okay, so that should be on the list. But it's a very, very boring film. Like, Hey, this isn't about what's going to be, what everyone else is going to enjoy. This is just your personal top five, so it doesn't matter. I enjoy it. The end's really sad, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're going to go into it now with what f- movies are today, I think movies before were more to portray, like, a, a book. Here's a book, and we're going to take as long as we need to tell the story. Right. Nowadays, yeah. it's like this happened, that happened, this yeah. happened, that happened, this happened, that happened. And it keeps you on on board with it. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of movies, um, when when books are turned into movies, a lot of people who read the book always have issues with the film. And that's part of the reason. Because the book is, it can take its time and explain everything and paint the picture. Whereas in the movie, a lot of times it's rushed. you got to tell all this information in a short period of time. And a lot of times the book will describe the emotions, the feelings the character was going through. In the movie, that that may not it's come lost. across, especially when it's time to cut, edit the movie. Yeah. Sometimes they'll film certain scenes, but when you go to the theater to see it, it's been cut and edited so much that sometimes the scenes that would have explained certain things have been have been cut out because the the theaters wanted you know, or the you know, the studio may want it a certain length or something. So. That's one of the things with that. But. Ender's Game is a good example of that. That book is really well written. Mm-hmm. Um, but when the film came out, they like put Harrison Ford in it. Mm-hmm. And it kind of just, just distracted from what the story was about because it's just, hey, Harrison Ford is in this. Mm-hmm. So it was a weird, you know, you'd have to read the book because the book really goes into like the psychology, not psychology, but just the mental, what, what the kid was going through throughout the whole situation he was running into. I thought it was interesting at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was four, and if I needed a fifth one of a, uh, oh, did you know David Bowie's in The Prestige? 
Mm, he plays I'm, Nikola Tesla. Oh, okay. I would have to go back and see it. I don't remember that. Yeah. But he would have been much older at that point, too. So I have to look at it again. I don't, I don't remember that. The only thing I'd say about the prestige is that it's so loud at certain points and really quiet at other times. Yeah, yeah. But the it's one of those movies that there's a twist at the end. Yeah. And the movie starts off showing you some of what happens at the end mm-hmm. and then it backtracks and just and, and the way it the ending is just such a twist that it's like it, that you don't really see coming. That's really why I, I enjoyed that movie. Wait, are we talking about Interstellar or The Prestige? The Prestige. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Interstellar. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh. well, it's a Christopher Nolan film, so. Uh, yeah. Interstellar. Oof. That, wait, wait. We're, we'll talk so... about that. I, I still have the floor. Okay. I got to say my fifth movie. Okay. That I come back to is, and I don't really remember, there's this film, and it, you ever watch any James Dean movies? Not really. Not really. It's like a old thing. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so... Anyways, I'll say a different film then. <laughs> There's this film called Giant that he's in, mm-hmm. and it's a, like an epic kind of like that where it goes from him being younger mm-hmm. and then them being older and having kids and then how he ends up striking rich and being like this super successful person, but he's not very happy. Mm-hmm. And then the whole like other side of it. So it's, I don't know. It's like about like Texas and the oil moguls, I guess you'd call them. Mm-hmm. I don't really know why I enjoy watching it. It's just a film that I just watch if I was... I watch these films when I'm sick. I think Mm -hmm. I already said that before. Mm -hmm. Like, if I just want to watch something that's not Batman, that isn't, yeah, you know, some documentary, or I don't really want to think too much. I just... It's all about the emotions. And in in each of these films, I feel like they portray emotion very well. um, Because it's hard to... Portray that in a way that's genuine mm-hmm. when you're faking it. And some movies really pull it off really well. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. So why does Interstellar suck, Aaron? Tell me. Okay, you know what? I would have to... Um, I just... And it's funny because there's debates online that you can look up on YouTube of people debating the film. But the ending is just so... It's so weird. The ending of the movie is just so weird. What? And ambiguous. I just... The way it ended, how he ended up in that other dimension, and all that stuff. We need to do we need to do a separate segment do on the know movie by itself. What someone told me that read the book said that it was and I oh I, and I didn't read the book. Okay, so. he said that it was supposed <clears throat> to explain paranormal events that happened on the Earth. I don't think that's the right word, paranormal. So there's certain things that happen, and that's like he was affecting his past by pushing the books. Remember. Yeah, and I the remember. Book falls. Mm-hmm. The whole thing was supposed to be explaining that through humans are coming from the future trying to talk to you. Yeah, I, but I don't think paranormal is the word for that. What's the word? I don't know. Because paranormal, you, you typically, when you say that, you're thinking about like ghosts, I thought. That's what I'm saying. The phenomenon of ghosts they were trying to explain is humans from the future talking to people from the past. Oh, so okay. your future self is trying to contact you. Got you, but that's why he was there at the end. Got you. So they're trying to explain basically ghost. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so I may have to take it back now. As being one of my favorite films. Oh, if you see something floating around your house, don't it's worry. Just you, it's from, just the you from the future. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make sure you order your copy of Interstellar on Amazon now. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but no, I no, I know what you mean. Honestly, I know what you mean, and I did not read the book. Now, maybe this is one of those situations where the book does explain better, but the movie it was just it was good, it was good, it was good until it got to the end, and then it was just like, what the heck? Well, that's how he goes into a black hole, and that's what is supposed to explain the whole like time loop stuffy or whatever. I uh, was not impressed. Well, you know, you don't have to be. <laughs> well, hey, if you look at the reviews, though, everybody wait, wait, and their mama wait. talk about that, though. I'm going to look on IMDb to see what it, where it's at. Um, but, again, it just, for me, the passing of time is probably one of the most difficult things for me to deal with in life. Yeah. And this whole thing about, like, going back and seeing his daughter grow up. Right. Is, yeah. like, or I think she's older than him. Well, at the end, she's, like, dead <laughs> or dying. 
Yeah. It's an 8 out of 6. 8 out of 6. Sorry, it's an 8.6 out of 10. <laughs> oh. Okay, well. Okay, often impressive and very beautiful, but less than stellar. As someone who likes the cast, loved the concept, and who considers Christopher Nolan very talented, and has enjoyed a good deal of his films, Interstellar was somewhat of a letdown. It is. It has a lot of great elements, but also has its flaws. One admires Nolan for more. Uh, I'm telling you, the movie is the movie itself was good up until a point. However, Interstellar is overlong, and because of the widely variable pacing, and that the story doesn't quite have enough content to justify it, it feels it. The pacing is wildly variable, as aforementioned. There are times where it's fine, but there's some choppiness and stodginess too. Dialogue isn't a strong suit either, of course, but that's Nolan films, isn't it? Well, not necessarily. I mean, Inception. Remember with the whole like whatever her name is, the architect. She was kind of the person who was just. Oh, why is this like that? Oh, well, you see, this is because of this and this and this. And then he's like, oh, who's his dead wife? And so then she's like the person that opens up the doors for you finding out more information. Oh, okay. Got it. We talked about that with Miguel. Yes. I can't believe you can't remember something we talked about two years ago. Yeah. Well, (laughs) once I have the conversation, that's it. (laughs) Overall, less than stellar and was expecting much better. This said, and Estrella is often impressive and very beautiful, especially technically, though the central relationship was also beautifully raised. Six out of ten. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, she, she, her review, by the way, is choppy and bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't know what to say about that. But all I know is, for me, it was a good movie to a point, and then it got to one point where it just kind of went off and almost like an M night movie. It's like the ending is like the twist is either great or you hate it. So I don't know. I'd have to watch the end again. Cause I don't really remember how it ends. I just remember him going to the black hole and it was like falling through a billion things. And then he was like, Marv, Marv. that's it. Yeah. Does that sound like a good ending? I to don't you? remember <laughs> how it ends though. <laughs> that was pretty much it. <laughs> but the soundtrack is amazing. Okay, that, but that's a different topic. We ain't talking about top five soundtracks. How dare Maybe you? Maybe that should be How next week. How dare you? The soundtrack in a film is sometimes what makes the film. People don't appreciate that. No. no. You watch a movie with a bad soundtrack, and you're in a world of pain. No, I disagree. Pain and confusion. <laughs> yes, exactly. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. You gotta stop it. Flopped. I'm going to keep hitting the table as much as I want. Okay. Well, that's going to affect the audio. And with that being said, <laughs> uh, we'll move on to my advice for today. Oh, actually, do you have any advice? Of, I advice didn't finish of my thought. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 wasn't as good as the first one because of the soundtrack. I disagree. Okay. Anyways. The soundtrack is not. The soundtrack is important. Yes. But if the movie is in the story is garbage, then it don't. You can have the greatest soundtrack in the world. Don't matter. You're strange. You have issues. Anyway, <laughs> advice. Do you have any advice? First of all, um, I'll let you talk about yours first. Okay. So my advice for the week is actually going to be financial. Something that I learned that a lot of people don't do, I found, after talking to some people about it. So I'll just share it. And it has to do with saving, saving, uh, like savings accounts. So most people have a checking and savings, but a lot of people only have one checking and one saving. But what I have discovered is it's really good to have a separate savings apart from your regular savings to save money in. And so they have these different accounts, a lot of them that have higher interest rates, the interest rates have tanked in the last year or so because uh, when I first opened up my a separate savings account, um, it was like at 2% or something. Now it's like 0.5, which is still oh. higher than your average savings account. So what I do is when I get paid, some of my money goes into my regular checking and some of it goes into that separate savings account. And you can have multiple because that's what I do. I have multiple. So, you know. A few bucks goes to one account and a few bucks goes to the other account. And I don't see it. I don't look at it. And that's a good way to save money without actually having to think about it. Just have it all automated. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. And so 
that is my recommendation, my advice for the week. But also, another question comes to mind is if you want to, uh, some people feel that they don't, they can't, re- like they use all their money in their checks and they can't really save any money. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, you know, they can't, they feel like they can't really do this. You don't really need much to save, if, even if it's only 10, you know, 15 bucks per check or whatever. You can always save something. But if you're looking for another way to save money, I have a few items I have listed here that you can do that will help save money. So if you're strapped for cash and you feel like you need, you're having a hard time save, here's some money-saving tips that I have tried some of <laughs> to help save money. So number one, you can shave your head. <laughs> I have done this. It saves you <laughs> so much time. Well, it saved me money over this past. It saved me time. Not going to the barber. <laughs> right. It has saved me money on shampoo, conditioners, and just time. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> oh, my hair's messed up. Oh, wait, I don't have any. Exactly. And if you have long hair, you can just shave it all off and sell it. And there's some money that you could do to save. You know, that is funny, but there is a pretty big industry. I know. I'm serious. Uh I'm not joking. Okay. You can sell your hair. So (laughs) (laughs) if anyone does this, let me know. I don't know how much you get for it, but I'm... I'm, That is a good question. But it's a good business, though. Sell your hair. Um, Number two, you can also try eating roadkill. Now, before... (laughs) Before you think I'm (laughs) crazy, before you get bent out of shape, just listen. Okay. Hear him out, guys. Roadkill, not only is it free, but it's also lean, healthy, organic, (laughs) and it's in abundance. (laughs) Have you ever skinned an animal? No. If you do it wrong and you break an artery, blood just gets everywhere and Um. it completely contaminates the meat. Well, I'm Which sure makes it go bad even faster. And that kind of ties into what I was saying earlier. Um, there's a YouTube video <laughs> for <laughs> oh, skinning no. everything. And depending on where you live, your mileage may no, vary. No, I'm saying <laughs> if you get smashed, the organs are all burst and it's just like rotting. Well, it depends. That's not a, that doesn't always happen. If you hit a deer, for example, it's, you're oh. just going to knock it out, you know. So it just depends. Now, and, and we live in the desert, so... Options are going to vary as far as what rogue, you know, because we have snakes, we have, uh, what do you call them, Gila monsters, uh, uh, which are these giant lizards. Oh, but we we do have javelina. So you have a chance of getting some bacon out of that thing. They actually do cross the street on Old Spanish Trail around 5 p.m. at sunset. Good. So there you go. Or whatever sunset is at the time. Yeah. So just be there and be ready with your smoker and um, you can have some bacon, <laughs> some ham hocks. Um Another way you can save money is by taking extra condiments. So when you go places, you know, just ask for extra ketchup, extra mustard, whatever the condiments are. If you like Chick-fil-A, get the Polynesian sauce. It is so good. You You don't have to buy it yourself. It's funny, but I know someone who does that. Yeah. And they gave me the ketchup, and it said it was real ketchup as opposed to I don't know what else they're putting in these packages. Uh, Probably sugar, I'm assuming. I don't know. Who knows? But that's one way you can save money. You don't have to... Spend money on uh, stealing condom. toilet rolls from your friends and family. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna say you should steal toilet rolls, but what I will say is that what you can do is that you know, most toilet paper is at least two ply, so take you can, one <laughs> ply, so you can separate it in half. Oh my god, and then it lasts twice as long. You just use one, the one ply. Oh. <laughs> Or just ditch it all together and use old newspapers and junk mail oh. and bills. <laughs> That's another thing. Um, take Tupperware to party. So whenever you go to a party, just fill it, bring your Tupperware with you. Speaking um, of which, I brought my Tupperware with me today. Good, good. There you go. Bring Tupperware everywhere you go. And just don't be afraid to fill up on <laughs> all the leftovers. Um, and don't be embarrassed either. Um, because it's true that the other people may look at you like you're funny, but really they're just jealous that they didn't think of it themselves. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So bring left, you know, you know, so bring your Tupperware and always take home leftovers. And last but not least, in order to save some more money, D I Y (laughs) do it yourself. So stop paying qualified professionals to fix your broken <laughs> home. <laughs> Don't pay them to fix your electrical. Don't 
pay them to fix your car. Just do it yourself. All you got to do is watch a few YouTube videos and a quick Google search, and you can fix anything. And I mean anything. So that's my advice. Except your broken family. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, and that's a whole different issue. Hey, I'm sure there's some YouTube videos for that, too, though. Um, there, are some, there are some others, but uh, I think you get the point. Just, just, just look around. Open your eyes. You can save oh my a goodness. lot. You know, so. My advice is to not listen to any of that. <laughs> People will save money. And if you follow any of these, let me know <laughs> if your mileage varied or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, for me, any advice that I would say is, um, I don't know, I don't have any. Oh, don't say you can't do something. Just say you don't want to spend enough time doing it. I like it. That's good advice. I don't want to spend the time it takes to do it. Yeah. Because then it makes you, like, takes the, like, I can't do stuff away from it. Mm -hmm. And it kind of lets you see that you really can do anything. You just need to spend a lot of time doing it. And when I say you can do anything, that varies. I mean, if you want to fly, like, jump off a cliff and fly, uh, I mean, that's obviously not something that you Your wanna... mileage may vary. <laughs> <laughs> But if there's, like, some task that you have that is very overwhelming, if you spend enough time doing it, eventually you'll get good at it. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you enter certain uh, places, I think, where people have been employed there for a long period of time, you may feel like you're dumb, but in reality, they've just been doing it longer than you have, and they kind of forget how it feels to learn something. Gotcha. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Cool. Makes sense to me. Like podcasting. Sucked did it, and now we're almost not as bad, I think. Sounds good to me. So, I hate to go back to tech again, mm -hmm. but there's a, a link if you can click on it. Okay. Oh, and it's about these Ray-Bans? Yeah, it's uh, ready for smart glasses. Oh, man, I just continue to Ray-Ban. Ready for smart glasses? Make yours Ray-Ban stories. The latest in wearable tech are smart eyeglasses and smart sunglasses with camera and audio combined legendary Facebook technology and iconic Ray-Ban style. With Ray-Ban X Facebook glasses, you can take photos and videos, listen to music and calls, and share contact directly with your social media channels. Choose your Ray-Ban glasses. Like, it's the same thing that they tried doing with Google Lens, mm -hmm. right? Basically, yeah. And then Snapchat also tried doing it. Mm -hmm. And so why are we still here? And some company think it's going to take off. The, the biggest issue with this is just the privacy. Most people don't want you. Recording. And it's Facebook that wants to. Yeah, exactly. This. And most people just don't want you recording them at all times. You know, that's just and listening to them like that's Zoom has already been bad enough. Like you don't think your camera's on or you don't think your microphone's on. Yeah, but glasses where you walk around and you're recording. It's everything. even worse. Yeah, nobody wants that. So that's why this. This is not a good idea. Um, why did he? Who knows? Pushing. Maybe it'll maybe it'll blow up one day, but that's yeah. Most people just don't want that. Who wants to be filmed everywhere they go? I can think of occasions where it might be useful. Um, again, like we mentioned earlier, walking home by yourself, you may want to turn on some glasses <laughs> so you can record everything. But as a general rule, I mean, that's just I don't know. It's a privacy nightmare. I'll put mm -hmm. it that way. It's having a conversation with someone and they're filming you and or recording you at all times, it's like yeah. And you can see them because I'm looking at the glasses right now. You can actually see the cameras on them. It's not they're not even hidden, which wow. I guess that's a good thing. Um, but it's the ones that are hidden. You got to right, be worried yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I guess that's a good. But thing. But even that, those glasses look creepy. <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah, a, a, there a goes very, Aaron with his uh, video glasses again. Yeah, a very sp specific person would have to wear those. So no, not a fan. But we'll see what happens. I don't think Ray Ban is going to be the one to blow them up though. No, but they're gonna keep trying. Yeah, they're gonna. They're just another company that keeps. Uh, so, speaking of continuously trying things, have you read anything about like deep fakes? Yeah. So they're taking uh, AI type of stuff and like putting it over people's faces to make them look like actors, and then mm -hmm. they'll do like TikToks or something. Mm -hmm. Well, now they're able to just generate people's faces out of thin air. Hmm. So what they're trying to do is create 
they want to like create films fully with AI, Mm -hmm. no production, no cost. You just do it fully on a computer. Mm -hmm. So like, how would you feel if someone like passed away and then they were continuously made films about them or with their AI? Well, they have, they've already done that. I know with star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's weird as anything. Well, what about the holograms of people who passed away, like musicians who've passed away, and they, they would use a hologram to perform? That's weird, too. It's it like, is. we're it still going to get this out of your dead body. Yeah. Yeah. It's creepy. Because, I mean, when someone dies and I have their phone number in my phone, like, it's just a... Do you delete that or do you keep it in there? Mm, I usually don't delete any numbers, really. Yeah, neither do I, but... It's kind of weird, like, with Instagram, if someone passes away, and then it's just, like, I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. No, I agree. But, but then making a film <laughs> out of right. dead people. Right. No. Yeah, I completely agree. But they, I, w- with my, I have an idea for the first movie. It's dead people talking about life. So it's just, like, them walking around saying how great everything is. <laughs> wow. Okay. Moving right along. <laughs> We have, what is this, AR video games on beer cans. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, speaking of. Uh, oh, did you not want to do that one? No, oh. we can do it. It says, Retro Invaders game hits augmented reality. Again, this is one of those things that you would have to see. But if you're a video game fan and you remember the old game Space Invaders, what they've done is you can now use your phone, in which most modern phones have this ability. You basically hold it up to the can and it will project an image of the game onto the can. So you kind of have to see it in order to understand, really. If you've never used AR, <clears throat> AR is kind of like what Pokemon Go was, or um, there's a lot of AR games. But basically, it's like when you look through your camera on your phone, your screen will show you things that aren't really there, but it uses the actual setting of your whatever you're aiming it at to put things in there. So, for example, if you aim your camera at your dining room table, well, the app can actually put something on the table and makes it look like it's actually there. So in this case, they're using, they're using Space Invaders, the old, the, the original, like, game. It's, which, co- it's cool and all, but I really would want them to do that with restaurants. Like, have something where you could pull up the menu in AR. And see the food and just see on the, the table. Food or the, or uh, just, you know. The only problem with that, though, is if it, the food comes and it doesn't look as good as the picture did. That's yeah. the only thing. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, sir. Can I have this instead? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, um, yeah. But you'd have to have like tech get involved with restaurants, mm-hmm. and that's a whole other thing. It's would you really pay when it's you don't really need it? I don't think so. But I think it'd be a cool gimmick. It is. It's something. Well, it, one thing it would do is it would be something for people to talk about. So, and you know. If you get people talking about your business, that's always a good thing. I mean, heck, we're talking about beer invaders, so. Exactly. So, uh, but yeah. And. But, like, a movie just filmed in uh, in, uh, augmented reality would be very, very interesting. Podcasts, augmented, or uh, those deep. They can even do voices. Mm Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, do, 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 oh, <laughs> so Aaron is mm-hmm. now going to learn to play the guitar. How do you feel? Well, talk about your musical history here. What's, what, how, you said you had a guitar before and that mm-hmm. blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bought an electric acoustic uh, when I was in New York and I took lessons for about six months or so. Then when I moved from New York to Connecticut, I lost the guitar. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, it disappeared, and I wasn't able to take it with me. And I just never bought another one and never took lessons again. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was nice. I was learning the chords. Well, first he started off teaching me the notes and how to read music. So it took a while. He taught you how to read music? Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to read music. Yeah, um, and how to play. So we started off going that route, and then we changed it up. And the reason why is because – the method that he was using to teach me, the problem is, is that it takes a while before you really to get good at reading actual music and playing it on the guitar. It takes a while mm-hmm. that way. So he tried to, so he switched it up and said, 
let me just teach you chords first. If I teach you the basic chords, you can play any song. You can play the Beatles song, which is when I got into the Beatles, actually, because I, um, he said a lot of their songs are really simple to play. Mm -hmm. So we switched it up kind of halfway, because I did tell him initially I wanted to learn the notes. But um, what happens is if you learn the chords, then you can start playing right away, and that's going to keep you motivated. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue. And the other route was cool, but you have to be in it for the long run. Yeah. And so I didn't know that. If I knew that, then I would have spent more of that time doing the chords, and I would have been better. But, again, once I moved I, you know, and lost the guitar, I just stopped taking lessons. And so that's it. That's all my music, um, musical abilities are. I mean, I played the piano a little bit, too. I learned, you know, but that's like ele you know, elementary school. And then I played violin. No, I played the cello, I mean, in elementary school as well. So I played the cello then the guitar, and then the piano a little bit. But again, we're talking in elementary and middle school. So, you know, you only get so far. And I wasn't in the band, you know. I was in strings for the cello. But if I knew then what I knew now, I would have kept playing it. But I Could failed. have been a cellist. <clears throat> yeah, so. Do, 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 well, do, this episode do, do, has do, been do, fun. No, so. it's going to keep going. No. I'm going to hook it up. No, this is a terrible idea. It's not that I can't, Antonio. It's just that I don't want to spend the time it takes to do it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this has been another episode of Two Crazy Scoops. Tune in go. next week as we discuss um, another top five, maybe top five favorite foods. Um, and I'll give you some more advice. And if you want more tips on how to save money, let me know, too. And I will definitely give you more tips. And you can give me more money. <laughs> Okay, well, so, so what am I doing? You are, like, hold it like you normally would. There's a lot of chords. There is too many chords here. I feel like there's not enough room. Eh, there probably isn't, but hey. <laughs> now you got to flip it the other way. Oh, yeah, because I'm right-handed. Slowly. <laughs> I am. But this, this chord, it's not, it's not enough room. Oh, that's the longest chord we have. Okay. Now so, what do you remember? That's so sensitive. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember all the. I don't remember the chords. I would have to play for a while to remember them. I don't remember. The so. Sounds <laughs> terrible. Put one finger here. Okay. So which one? Which string? Your pointer finger on the second, or the first fret of the second string. Got it. Now, your second, your middle finger mm -hmm. on the second fret of the third string. Got it. And your third finger on the third fret of the fourth string, or Got fifth it. string, sorry. Oh, fifth, okay. Oh, wait, sorry. Move your middle finger up one string, and then put your third finger down on the fifth, third fret. Yeah, there you go. Let's play it. There you go. Does that sound all right? So you have to have your fingers pressed down and kind of closer to the bottom of the fret. Not too far to the bottom, but... There oh, you go. This is going to take a while, though, because my it's finger... It's okay. It's fine. There you go. Now, you use your... A pointer finger. Okay. Put it over all the strings on the top. Okay. Then get your middle finger, put it on the second fret of the third string. Then take your third finger and put it on the third fret of the fourth string. And then get your pinky and put it on the third fret of the Fifth string. This is ridiculous. No, third fret. It looks like this. There you go. Yeah, wait. This is horrible. I can't possibly <laughs> do this. My fingers don't move. Like I haven't played in so long, so my fingers are not naturally going to move. You can do it, Aaron. I have a faith in you. And then you. I have big fingers, so it takes a while for my calluses oh my to grow. Gosh. So You're playing a nylon string guitar. That's one of the simplest Yeah, but ones. look at my fingers. So it's hard for me to push one string down. It takes me a while to get my fingers so that they don't, they only hit one string. All you have to do is play this chord. And then we got one more. 
That's it. I can't go through okay. those three chords. This is not you can <laughs> not in one sitting. That's what I'm saying. This no, is a you don't have to idea. play them. You just have to play the chord once. You okay. don't have to do the progression. Just play each chord once. Okay, and you'll be on your way to learning how to play La Bamba. Okay, and twist and shout actually. <laughs> okay. So, middle finger, second fret, third string. This is very uncomfortable. I can't hold all. How do I hold all the fingers? Don't you just get like a capo or something? No, you could, but this is makes it so you can actually play the song. Okay, because I can't hold my fingers on all the strings and... This isn't to expect you to learn right now. It's just trying to share with people the experience of learning how to play guitar. This needs to be for video. Well, no, well, I mean, we have what we have now. This is not an audio. Pain and confusion. Yeah, this is painful and confusing. Okay. okay. All right, anyway, what am I doing now? So that, now put your middle finger on the second fret of the third string. Okay. And your fourth finger on the third fret of the fourth string. I need to clip my nails. <laughs> then your pinky just goes on the f the okay. fourth fret. Okay. Sorry, the third fret. Third fret of the sixth string. Okay, third fret of the sixth. There you go. This is very difficult. This is one of the hardest chords to play. Okay, sound right. that's fine. That's fine. There's something wrong. Now we're gonna do G. <laughs> no, that's not G. Now we're gonna do G. Okay. Middle finger, third fret, sixth string. Okay. Pointer finger, second fret, fifth string. Okay. And then your third finger and your pinky. The third finger's on the set of uh, the. Third fret of the second string. Okay. And then your pinky's on the third f or the third fret. Third fret. Of what string? The, f the first string. Okay. So you just got to move them a little bit up. Kind of twist your wrist. That way. Other way. Yeah. Now move those fingers up. There you go. There you go. That doesn't seem right, though. It doesn't matter. It's just, this is the beginning steps of learning to play the guitar. Yeah, I need to clip my nails. <laughs> now you need to sing La Bamba. <laughs> you just say, blah, 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 La Bamba. Oh, no, I can't sing at blah, all. Blah, 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 <laughs> I can't sing without auto-tune. <laughs> like T-Pain. <laughs> you are a pain. <laughs> <laughs> And that, people, has been a horrible guitar lesson. But you know what? I, I might take it up again. I might just take it up again. Should I get an acoustic electric guitar or should I just get an acoustic? So the electric side of it's not very important because you're really not going to be, I mean, no offense. I don't think you're going to be performing live. Oh, dude. Once I get good, I'm going to be selling out arenas all over Tucson. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> COVID parties with AO. <laughs> It'll be a blast. You know, it's funny. You, s yeah, this there's a guy who plays an acoustic version of uh, "If I Ain't Got You" by Alicia Keys, and nice. it's really good, which I'll show you afterwards. But I don't think that the electric part is very important unless you're going to be recording yourself and producing your own music or performing in front of people. Which, I don't know. I, I can mean, I can see my name in bright lights. <laughs> Aaron <laughs> Owens <laughs> breaks the stage. He only knows how to play Beatles covers right, exactly. and La Bamba, <laughs> La Bamba, which is a huge hit in this area, mind you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, a nylon string guitar is nice because it's a it's a starter guitar and it's not too uh, heavy on your fingers. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what this is. Yeah. It looks like some of the strings are nylon and some are metal. Well, I'm sure they're metal at the top. I don't really know. I like to think I know what I'm talking about. When well, no, but these are metal. But these are nylon. Well, let's just call the nylon string because it, I don't really... You mix them up. No, this comes in the package that way. You see that the, at the top how they're wound onto the head of the guitar? Yeah. So if they were steel strings, it would like break that neck. Because steel strings have a lot more tension on them. I mean, that's just how you learn. You just mess around on it. Find songs that you like and 
find out the basic chords, learn the chords, and you're golden. Yeah, I have to remember the chords. Well, you'd be surprised how much your brain remembers because it's a it's muscle memory mixed in. You know how when you're learning a language and they told us to use your arms, like throw a ball and stuff? Mm-hmm. When you're playing guitar, you're using your muscles, so it kind of like ingrains it into you. Yeah, that's true. Um, Especially if it's a song that you like. It is very frustrating, but something I found helpful is when I'm trying to learn a song, try to learn two songs at the same time. And don't try to learn Mary Had a Little Lamb, because it's just dumb. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was good, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I wanted to tell you right now, I'm going to give you that guitar. Are you serious? You're going to have to give it to me once the show's over, but... Oh. <laughs> but for the rest of this episode, <laughs> For the rest of this episode, it's your guitar. Dude, you are the greatest friend ever. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate this. This is really nice. This is a nice guitar. I'm really impressed. Thank you. You're welcome. So the benefit of having an acoustic electric, though, is that sometimes they come with tuners on them. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, those buttons on the end, mm-hmm. uh, if you press it, it'll tune. One of them's phaser. I don't know what that does, but you can tune the guitar that way, which oh. is helpful. It's not as necessary today because you can buy, uh, like... Well, you can get a smartphone app to do it, too. You can get a smartphone app. You can also get this little thing that clips on the top of it. Mm-hmm. That'll... Uh, That's cool. And you can also adjust the bass, the treble, and the volume on that as well when I you're connected. I love it. Thank you so much. This is really <laughs> nice. You're welcome. No one has ever given me a guitar before. This is awesome. Thank you. Oh, uh, man. I have one. I'm going to leave you with this. Can we, like, somehow watch a video? What, the Superman video? Yeah. Do you know? So what am I doing? You're just going to play the video. I'm going to s- tell me what you think of it. Well, don't play the audio because I don't know what they say in it. But the concept is actually hilarious. Oh. But no one's going to be able to see this. I'll put it on the Instagram. <clears throat> you can explain it to me. So it's Nicolas Cage wearing a suit. He's playing Superman. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. He's playing Superman. For what? What movie was this? So, who did the original Batman films? Are you talking about, like, the 1989? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Michael Keaton? Yeah. That was uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton was going to produce Superman with Nicolas Cage as Superman. Really? I didn't <laughs> know that. And this is the test uh, videos. But they never made the movie, so no. I guess. <laughs> is it, was it because of the test? I don't know. I have to do research on it. But it looks pretty bad. <laughs> what? Why? Where? <laughs> yeah, no, that looks bad. Yeah, but it had potential, maybe. You but never know. Yeah, no. Go to two thirty. That's better, but still not good. So the the plot of the film was apparently he was supposed to be going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> really? For what? <laughs> a joke is it remember national treasure oh yeah 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 okay (laughs) for what why (laughs) oh man yeah this is pretty bad i wish i could hear it though but no it's pretty bad i'm glad they didn't go ahead and make this but i have seen movies where they've shown like some of the behind the scenes or some of the making of and it looks bad when they're making it but then by the time it comes out it's better I was thinking about like that first X Men movie. Some of the treatments and stuff they did <laughs> the behind the scenes. First X Men movie was terrible, right? But you should have seen this, the behind the scenes. It was even worse. <laughs> the only thing about that movie they got right was casting Holly Berry as Storm. Oh, could you see Nicolas Cage as Clark Kent no. though? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he could. He could be Clark Kent. Because he was a nerd. and like This guy really isn't Superman. Yeah. <laughs> like, he plays a better Clark Kent, so it's yeah. more convincing that people wouldn't recognize him yeah. as Superman. Right, yeah. No, he would make a good Clark Kent. But the Superman part, it was like, oof, no. No. This is more of a Clark Kent film than it is. He's He just happens to be Superman as well, but it's more yeah. about Clark Kent. Yeah, exactly. 
So, there you go. This has been Two Crazy Scoops. With your hosts, Ao and Antino. Aaron's going to play his uh, song. Yeah, remix. Go, 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 go. Oh, this go, is terrible. Go, go. Play guitar. Learn to play. What's your excuse?